Can y'all hear me? Yes. All right. Um, it is um, time. It's 3.30. So let's go ahead and get this meeting started. Um, I see Council Member Medina. Uh, Council Member Coombs let me know that um, she likely will not make um, today's meeting. She has a, an appointment conflict that was unexpected. Um, Laura, is there, are you missing anyone? Um, everyone on your staff available? Yes, we're ready to go. All right. Um, then we'll call this meeting uh, to order um, and start with the approval of the minutes from the April 24th meeting. No changes for me. All righty, and none from me either, and I approve as written. So get that out of the way. Um, and we will start with the presentation from the Human Relations Commission um, and their annual report. Great, thank you. Did you want me to bring it up or did you guys have it ready to go? I have it ready to go. Okay, thank you so much. Just, just let me know when you want the next slide. Okay, you can actually go to the next slide. Perfect. So my name is Amy Wiles and I'm the chair of the Human Relations Commission. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak about the work the commission has done since we met last year. So here are the stats for the commission. Currently, we do have some openings. We have one commission approved application that is waiting for council approval with another interview in the works. So hopefully we can get closer to being a full commission in the near future. Uh, next slide, please. We do get a yearly budget, and as you can see from June of 2023 to current, we have allocated some of that budget um, to various nonprofits in the community. We do focus on nonprofit organizations and events that, teach, that reach a wild, wide audience and strive to learn about the new opportunities monthly so that we can better touch all community members in one way or another, either through our donations or through our volunteer work and projects. Next slide, please. One goal the commissioner set in our yearly planning meeting is to engage with new community groups and nonprofits monthly. And here are some of the organizations we have either learned about via presentations or have actually partnered with, again, either with those monetary donations or volunteer hours at their events so far this year. Next slide, please. We do try to be active in the community. So the next few slides will focus on events that we have attended as guests, volunteered at or donated to. So the first one up is Pride. We attended both Denver and Aurora Pride in 2023 with a plan in place to do the same this year. We were able to ride with Aurora Fire, which was a great time. Um, those fire trucks are so tall and they get so hot in the middle of June at that Pride event. But we had a great time handing out um, giveaways to the, to the crowd and just interacting with people. And then when it came to the Aurora Pride, we shared a table with the DEI office and were fortunate enough to really meet a lot of great people and and just hear about what's going on in that section of the community as well as provide them information on the human relations commission next slide please some of our commissioners also attended the multicultural mosaic festival where mary Kauf mayor kaufman was also in attendance and again we shared a table with the dei office you can see some of our giveaways we this year went with um, bags for some of the events that we attend to try and promote that bring your reusable bag and not rely on plastic or paper at the at the grocery stores next slide please our additional summer events included the iron shop Iron Sharp Community Kickoff event at Soccer City, Global Fest, and of course, Juneteenth. Next slide, please. Santa in the Park was a large community event that we volunteered at with the Aurora Police Department Community Relations Team. We have a really great partnership with them and, and always are um, 
grateful when they include us in any events that they have. The event provided food, shoes, baby necessities, and other resources to our community. And again, it gave us an opportunity to really interact with the community, hear what the concerns are, and get some word out about the great work that the city is doing. Um, we know our DEI office very, is very active, and so we always like to talk about the events that they're doing when we're out in the community. Um, next slide, please. For the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, we actually sponsored, volunteered, and promoted multiple events throughout the week. Some of the events included the opening prayer, or the opening celebration, prayer vigil, and the proclamation reading. Next slide, please. We also partnered with the DEI office and Iron Sharp Community Foundation at a very cold and snowy morning in January to create these support bags for our at-risk and McKinney-Vinto students. The bags included community resource information, toiletries, snacks, and then my favorite, the words of affirmation, because we want to make sure every student knows exactly how important and valued they are. Next slide, please. Our fall and winter project this year was in conjunction with Iron Sharp Day of Service, and we purchased supplies to make teacher care kits. These kits included basic hygiene items and snacks for the teachers to have in their classrooms to help support our McKinney-Vinto students who may not have what they need to start the day off feeling confident and ready to learn. So these items included um, basic hygiene items, brushes, combs, hair bows, ties, um, toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorant, things like that that students that are McKinney-Vinto students may not have accessible to them at home. Um, or wherever they may be living or staying at the moment. And so this allows them to start the day off feeling good without the financial burden falling on our teachers who we already know are, are at a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to that. Next slide, please. Additional fall and winter events included attending the New World Gala to support a local foster care agency and then attending the Building Trust Summit, which was sponsored by the DOJ in conjunction with all of our local police departments. We got to work in small groups and ideate on ways to solve trauma in policing, implicit and overt biases, and overall trust building with the community. Next slide, please. Our strategic goals for 2024 are listed here. Our next event is a community reading event, which we are partnering with the Stanley Marketplace to hold on June 29th. This has been two years in the making and we are incredibly excited that it's actually going to happen this year. The event will feature re readers from diverse backgrounds reading to local children and end with every child receiving a culturally diverse book for them to take home and hopefully read over the summer so that they're not focused on just playing video games. Um, after that, our fall project is to create SRO care kits. This will be similar to the teacher care kits, but we'll focus more on snacks to help the SROs engage positively with the students at our school districts. We want to continue to learn about community organizations that we can partner with for the remainder of 2024 and into 2025 and create more awareness of our commission by attending activities held in the city that reach a wide range of community members. Last slide, please. Finally, I just wanted to thank our partners at the city. Natasha and Sarah are incredible and the work that they do in the DEI, DEI office is invaluable in a city that is the epitome of the word diversity. They are both incredible people who the city is fortunate to have leading such important efforts in our city so that every citizen feels valued and heard. And we are grateful to be able to partner with them to hopefully ensure that our commission continues forward with their goal of community inclusion and diversity engagement within the city. Does anybody have any questions? Councilmember Medina, do you have any questions? Well, uh, just a couple things. Uh, are you needing donations or any other things? I, I have access to a couple groups, so I may see about connecting them to, to you guys and see what resources they have available. Yeah, that would be great, especially for those SRO kits or even the book drive. 
Um, we know that when we made those care crit kits for the teachers, that the, the cost of those items, you know, um, piled up really quickly. And so we weren't able to do as many kits as we would like, but we really want to set the SROs off for a really successful start to the school year next year. So any support with that. And again, with the reading, we actually have an Amazon wish list for our books so that hopefully we can get some community donations in addition to the money that we as um, commissioners will be putting forward towards it. Okay, great. Thank you. Everything Thank was you. great. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I want to echo those sentiments. Uh, no questions. Really excited to see the breadth of um, events that y'all have engaged in. Um, looks like they all look like a lot of fun, frankly. <laughs> so I hope, I hope they were. <laughs> they are. I we I think everybody on the commission really enjoys being able to engage with the community and and meet new people and kind of, you know, I think my favorite part is hearing their stories and hearing, you know, about what's important to them so that then hopefully we can incorporate that into some of the work that our commission does. Gotcha. Um, for the... Maybe this was answered elsewhere. Never mind. I was going to ask how much the sponsorships were. How do folks approach you all? Like, do you have a process to go through it and determine like how you divvy out the different sponsorships? Yeah, actually, what we try to do is I have challenged every commissioner to go and research various nonprofits in the community, and they have to bring at least one to the commission per year. Mm -hmm. And then we have them come and do a presentation. We generally want them to have a specific event or goal that they're trying to reach for that then we as a commission get together and vote on how much money we may be able to support them with. Um, and obviously, we don't have an infinite budget. So if we don't have money, we're are also usually willing to volunteer in their projects or help out get the word out on you know social media with our various um, networks and organizations. So we try to support either with publicity funds or don or volunteer hours. One of the three. Gotcha. I love that. I think it's it is more than just like a monetary commitment, and there's so much value in other ways. You know, time, treasure, talent are all equally as important. So I like that. That's um. A part of your package or offering. Yes, that's our goal. Try to engage in some way. Wonderful. Um, yeah, no, no specific questions uh, aside from that. So I'm, I'm good on, on my end. Great. Thank you so much. And Thank also you. would love to invite you and anybody else to our, our reading event in June. Um, we're really hoping it will be a fun time. We can't wait to get some of these different readers to come and, and offer their their voices to our youth. So we're excited about that. Is that the 29th? The 29th from 10 to 12 at the Stanley Marketplace. Okay. I might be out of town, but um, we at least have it. Uh, I have it on my calendar if that doesn't end up working out. But thanks so much for your presentation and for the invitation. Great. Thank you. All righty. Um, we are moving along. Our next presentation is the Aurora Youth Commission's annual report. Hi there. How are you all? <laughs> so I'm good. Donna. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. I would like to introduce Sydney Search. She is our um, our chair for the Aurora Youth Commission, and she's going to kind of walk us through our slides and uh, let you know what we've been up to this year. Yeah, it's very nice to meet everyone. Thank you so much for having me and for having us. Um, I'm the chair of the Aurora Youth Commission. Again, my name is Sydney Sirk, um, and I am excited to show you some of the things that we put together for you today. Um, so starting off with the mission and the purpose of the Aurora Youth Commission. So what we really want to do is provide a voice to the youth of, of, youth of Aurora. We really want to exemplify um, uh, our ideals and some of the issues that the youth of Aurora might be facing, um, not just to the city council, but also to the city in general. Um, we work with a lot of departments. We have a lot of departments come in and speak. And so really um, not, not only be able to gain those different perspectives, but also um, talk to those different people from different areas of the city, um, it's really beneficial in uh, in sort of um, uh, letting other people know about what the youth is what the youth is dealing with in our concerns. So our goals for this year specifically, um, first of all, we want to um, continue to try and get a full uh, member commission. 
Um, we also have a really big goal this year of community service, lots of community service events, volunteering outreach, and then again, just the more broad and general role we want to hear and understand um, the youth issues in Aurora. So our membership for this year, we had nine youth members from the ages of 15 to 21 and four adult members. Um, as of this year, we had seven youth vacancies and two adult vacancies. However, we do have three new members approved for the 2024 to 2025 year. Um, of course, we have our liaisons, Dave Wagner and Donna Hunt, um, who you just heard speak. And then we have a multitude of schools represented from around the area. We have Grandview, Cherokee Trail, Eagle Crest and Smoky Hill. So um, here's just a little slide. Um, I wanted to introduce you to some of our commission members. There's a picture of us there at one of our meetings. And then I've also tagged on some testimonials from some of our youth members. Um, but basically a lot of them talk about how um, the Aurora Youth Commission, it's um, garnered a lot of connections between us. Um, again, we do a lot of community service. So really just building up that ideal um, or that value of volunteering, that idea of uh, outreach, uh, not only to the youth in the community, but to the community itself. Um, we've been with, you know, businesses and again, multiple different departments throughout the city. So really just building those um, connections and uh, really promoting um, engaging in local government. So our meetings are the first Thursday of every month. Um, they uh, conjunct with the public school calendar so that our members are able to attend all of the meetings from August to May. Um, they are two hours, 6.30 to 8.30, um, and our members can either come to the meetings at the Central Rec, at the Central Rec Center or via WebEx. And then some of our um, new ideas for the next year is we want to create semester goals focusing specifically on recruitment and volunteering. Again, that was a major um, goal of ours this year, a major focus of ours. We really placed a lot of emphasis on our team bondings, our gatherings, um, and then bringing people that are interested in being a part of the commission. And then uh, secondly, mental health. We did um, a lot of initiatives focused on that this year. So we'd like to um, bring that into the next year um, and really focus on um, getting youth perspectives and putting together um, our project for that. So here's some of examples of our in-person volunteering. Um, for one we did, we are Aurora Youth Winter Break. Um, that was, of course, over winter break. And we really helped at the Recreation Center. We helped um, run the activities. We met a lot of youth. Um, and it was really a good opportunity to connect with the youth um, and just to have fun and see what um, you know inspires the youth and what um, they feel comfortable, what, what kind of space makes them feel comfortable. Um, and then also the adaptive triathlon. We helped out with the um, adaptive triathlon, put on a rise. Again, that was a really fun community service event. Um, lots of interactions with youth, uh, lots of knowing, um, hearing people's stories and getting to help out with such, uh, such an amazing community service event. Um, and then in February, um, as happens every year, uh, we attended the Youth Celebrate Diversity Conference um, at Cherry Creek High School. Um, we went to a lot of workshops that basically uh, taught about uh, many different aspects of, um, you know, diversity or just um, different aspects um, of within Colorado. I know there was some workshops on homelessness and there were some workshops on racial justice and some workshops on, you know, um, housing. So uh, basically all of our members attended these different workshops. And when we came back, we were able to reflect um, and sort of put together a conversation about how we can bring all of these ideas back into the Aurora Youth Commission, how we can benefit our youth. So every meeting we have a keynote speaker. Um, again, every month we try to pull from a different department or a different area again, because we're really trying to um, gain these those unique experience, oh, th those unique perspectives that we then use um, to sort of springboard for ideas. Um, so in November, we had Andrea Wright from the Youth Violence Prevention Program. Um, she was a really big part of our mental health initiative, sort of getting that off of the ground and getting ideas from her. Um, in January, we had Joe Burns from the Colorado Public Health Parks and Recreation Collaborative. February, it was Sue, ha Sue Hauk and Devin Lorimer from Arapahoe County. They did a presentation on youth and vaping. March, we had Courtney Tassin from the Crisis Intervention Program, and also Michael Brannon. He's a Senior Media Relations Specialist. April, we had Bill McCartan from the Aurora Elections Commission. And our last meeting, May, we had Matt Holtman. Um, he's from the state of Colorado, and he is a Children and Youth inter Intergovernmental Liaison. 
So again, uh, more on the team building. I know uh, that I said that we focused on a lot on recruitment this year, um, and a lot of how we did that was through the team bondings. We asked people to bring in friends or bring in people um, that would be interested in the commission. So of course, we had our um, intermission bonding, um, which would be our book club. We read uh, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, and we did a discussion um, every class or uh, every meeting on it. Um, and it was really insightful just learning about um, everyone's perspectives on the book and how we can interpret the book and really use that within our own ideas. And then also we had our winter team bonding um, in December. That was a game night at the Southeast Rec Recreation Center. And then our May team bonding um, just recently was at the Bolero Bowling Alley. So thank you so much for your time. And um, do you have any questions? I Sorry about that. No, no problem. Yes, <laughs> logistics on my end. Um, Councilmember Medina, go for it. Yes. Uh, again, I've seen that. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm certainly glad that the commission is still moving. I know I I ran that as well when I worked for the city as well, and I'm just still trying to figure out how you're trying to get more kids from different parts of the city because it seems like they're all Cherry Creek and they're all in the south east part of the city uh so i just want to extend my invitation again that if you need help to get in some of these schools or get some people interested i got contacts in most of those schools that are there from central hinkley gateway overland rangeview and vista peak so I, i'd like to see it pretty much across the city representative because to me it seems very lopsided in, in a sense Mm -hmm. that we're listening to one sector of our city and not uh, the overall city as far as youth. And since I'm trying to get this uh, youth center uh, to be that way as well, I'd like to offer an opportunity to, to come and talk about that and get some feedback from your commission as well. So, but thank you for everything. And uh, I know Donna does a good job and I appreciate that. So, but uh, let me know how I can help. Will do, thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Medina, um, and thank you for the presentation. Um, I really enjoyed seeing the different events that you did from youth violence prevention to vaping to election commission presentations. I mean, you guys are um, engaging in these topics at a really young age, and it makes me really happy to see that. Um, and also the the community building component, right? There's like a lot that you um, learn just working with your peers. Um, and, you know, I think like probably Councilmember Medina could agree that like you work a lot with each other and you have to, you know, develop a level of trust with community to, to be able to move some of these big things. And I hope you'll take him up on his offer for the, um, to engage around the a potential youth teen center. Um, uh, him and I have been talking and I know I'm really excited to see hopefully something come to fruition as well. Um, I graduated from Smoky Hill, so, you know, um, I'm happy to see that there's uh, engagement um, across different schools, but I, you know, I would, I don't see any Ward 1 schools on there. Um, so if I can also help support that uh, process um, and connecting, um, I hope you'll consider us both um, a resource. Otherwise, thank you so much for your presentation. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, thank you both. That's awesome that you'll help us uh, look for more commissioners, uh, get the word out. I think that's really helpful, especially when it comes from you all um, and getting our foot in the door. I think that will be huge. So yes, we want to get more towards the APS direction um, for sure. And Council uh, Member Medina, we would love to have you come out and talk next year. We're off for the summer, so um, we'll send you our agenda and we would love you to come out. That would be perfect. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. All righty. Um, let's move on to our last presentation, which is the uh, annual report for the Aurora Commission for Older Adults. Okay, can everybody hear me? All right, go, Lori. Um, okay, um, Lori Sanchez, I'm the staff liaison for the um, for the commission. I'm trying to show their presentation, which I can't. 
Let's try this way. I have it up if you need me to do it. Um, I might need Lori, to do that. Lori, Inez can run it for uh, for Jeannie. OK, sounds good. Um, so to introduce, I'm um, going to introduce Jeannie and uh, Jeannie Davis, who's the chair and Caroline Kim, and they will be um, presenting the 2023 annual report today. Well, thank you, Lori. I appreciate that introduction. Um, and the person who is running the slides, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. The person who's running the slides. OK, well, a glimpse of the agenda, the purpose and the commission membership will be shown to you now on the screen that slides one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, please. Am I missing something here? And as we're not seeing the slides, this is Brooke. Hi, Brooke. Hi. I thought I just was I just thought I just heard that someone was going to advance the slides on their end. That's correct. I'm not sure if Inez um, Inez can. Um, Inez, are you seeing the slides? We're not seeing them on a, at least I'm not seeing them uh, on the screen. I think I'm, I lost not either. everyone on my main computer. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yes. OK, I'm reopening up my screen. I apologize. I'm on my phone, so just give me one second to reopen up this one. Inez, is it possible for for Laurie to share her screen with you? That might be a lot simpler. It her. doesn't it doesn't really matter who shares the screen. Um, I just might for some reason to close out of my laptop. But I she do just, have the, the presentation, so just give me one second. Jeannie, I can go ahead and share my screen. I got it. If let if you let Lori share her screen, it would be ideal, if you don't mind. Can you That's, guys see my screen? Because I'm I'm sharing the, no. the the PowerPoint. Okay. I have it pulled up. Can everyone see that? I can see it. Yes. Okay. I will facilitate the presentation. So just let me know when we need to switch slides. OK. Well, a glimpse of the agenda, the purpose, the mission and commission membership is being shown on the screen now. That's slides two through seven. And you can review them in more detail within the report. I'm Jeannie Davis, chairperson of the Aurora Commission for Older Adults and Commissioner Caroline Kim is going to co-present with me today our 2023 annual report. I'm also serving my third year as a commissioner, and this is my second term as chairperson of the commission. We really are proud of our accomplishments in 2023 and the goals we've set for 2024. So I'd like to share just a few of the highlights with you. We'll start with slide number eight, please. Advocacy. You'll remember that after the closure of Morning Star Adult Day Program, City Council directed this commission and city staff to conduct a needs assessment of older Aurorans. The commission continued its work with the pros team and consultant Epley 
during which time we participated in the creation of the needs assessment scope of work, which was necessary to develop a request for proposal. Nine, please. Commissioners approved the final draft of the scope of work and a request for proposal was indeed issued. 10, please. We participated in the consultant selection process by reviewing redacted versions of proposals and submitting our scoring results to the selection committee. We didn't participate in the interview process. However, the committee asked our specific questions during each interview and advised us which firm was awarded the project. 11, please. A few months ago, we met with the consultants to kick off the project and learn about their plan of action. Commissioner Jorgensen and I represent the commission during bi-monthly project vision team meetings, which began in January. Our goal is to remain committed to the successful completion of a comprehensive needs assessment, which we all believe will help the city identify existing services and the unmet needs of older Aurorans. 12, please. We requested and received a proclamation for Older Aurorans Month and plan to make this a recurring annual request. 13, please. Commissioners attended the presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> the presentation ceremony, which was held in city council chambers. 14. We celebrated Older Aurorans Month by having our first annual walk and roll event. <laughs> 15. It was held at Del Mar Park and participants walked one mile in the pouring rain. 16. Mayor Kaufman offered opening remarks. City departments staffed exhibit tables. Participants received medals at the finish line and a complimentary breakfast bar and massages were provided. 17. <laughs> Each person wore a number during the walk and were cheered on by the sandwich boards placed along the route. Finally, everyone received a swag bag full of city goodies. 18. To say we are grateful to city staff for coordinating, publicizing, and marketing this event is an understatement. We hope that you'll make time to watch the Aurora TV Channel 8 media coverage by clicking the link shown on page four in our report. With that, I'd like Caroline to introduce herself and continue with our advocacy achievements. Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me OK? Yes, ma'am. Great. Thank you, Jeannie. I'm Caroline Kim, and I came on board the commission in 2023, and I just want to thank City Council for allowing me this opportunity to give back to this community that I've lived in for about 24 plus years now. So I'm going to start with slide 19. Caroline, could you mean for your video to be off? Excuse me for interrupting. Uh, I just turned it off because everyone had theirs off. I can turn it back on. Oh, OK. There we go. OK. Thank you. So, uh, I'm continuing with slide 19 uh, with uh, our 2023 accomplishments in the area of advocacy. So we established a partnership with Aurora Police Department and we welcome an information sharing relationship with their community relations section and special victims unit. Slide 20. We advocated for future recreation programming during the ACAA's patron town hall meeting. And two of our suggestions have been added to their program schedule. One is the caregiver support group, and the other is reading to preschoolers, which several of our commissioners have already participated in, and they're having such a blast with the little kiddos. Slide 21. Our advocacy goals and other goals for 2024 appear immediately following these achievements in each section of the report, but we'll only highlight just a few of them as we go along. 
slide 22. Let's move into the area of education and information dissemination accomplishments in 2023. We co-sponsored the 2023 Living Your Best Life Speaker Series with the ACAA. There were 14 scheduled speakers and the programs were held at the ACAA and Talon's Reach Library. Several of us also participated in ACAA's National Volunteer Week activities. And in an effort to invite older adult conferences and conventions to our city, we presented a list of organizations to visit Aurora. May I interrupt you for- I'm sorry, that was 23 and 24. I apologize yeah. for that. Like 23 and 24. Thank you. Um, okay, so slide 24. That was our best life speaker series. Okay, now on we're on to 25. So we were, commissioners was also busy in 2023 distributing surveys, information rack cards, event flyers, and attending city council ward meetings. Slide 26. And by by the way, our in general informational rack card and the My Life Thread emergency card, they've been translated into Spanish. And we're so very proud of that. It's great to have as we distribute these during in-person events. Slide 27. So one of our primary goals for 2024 in the area of education and information dissemination is to collaborate with Aurora Health Alliance and Anschutz Multidisciplinary Center on Aging to present seminars related to healthcare for older adults. Slide 28. Please look at page six of our report to see a full list of education and information dissemination goals for 2024. Okay, I'm gonna turn it back to Jeannie now. Thank you. Slide 29, please. The promotional products purchased last year with assistance from the PROS leadership team enhanced our communications and marketing efforts. Slide 30. We added inscribed refrigerator magnets and ink pens to the poster boards and the tablecloth that we display during our in-person events. 31. And we were visible at the Active Aging Expo at Mali Recreation Center. And we are excited, 30, oops, that's 32. We are excited to, no, 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 back one more. That's slide 32. We're excited to have welcomed two volunteers, Victoria and Francis. 33. The benefits of our interaction with other organizations continues to strengthen our ability to network and share information impacting older adults. And the support we receive from the ACAA enables us to work together by staffing exhibit tables during their major events. 34, please. One of the goals we didn't tackle last year is to coordinate a series of panel discussions with city council members. We believe constituents will appreciate learning about your vision and plans for older adults in their respective wards. We hope to accomplish this sometime during the 2024 Aurora Forum for Older Adults. 35. Our committees have worked diligently and accomplished much in 2023. 36. The public relations chairperson coordinated staffing display tables and distribution of literature to announce upcoming events and activities. She even arranged a reciprocal information sharing agreement with Mission Vejo Library, which resulted in us staffing tables at two of their events. 37, one of which was their neighborhood block party last year. 38, we are confident our public relations goals will be met in 2024. 39, there's a lot of excitement about our intergenerational support committee the pilot program that we've established with Mission Vejo. And by the way, Caroline is the chairperson of that committee. 
They were selected to talk about our partnership at the Colorado Library Association's annual conference, and we worked closely with them to create their presentation. 40, please. Together, we hosted an event called Generational Split. It was a fun trivia game, and we're going to do that again this summer. 41, please. It wasn't surprising. The teams that included younger participants won more prizes, <laughs> but everyone made banana splits at the end. 42. The committee put together a call for intergenerational action flyer to encourage intergenerational programming by external organizations. They have some great ideas and goals for 2024. We're hoping to host at least two events with Mission Vejo Library, one of which will be the intergenerational split game, and to work with the Aurora Gateway Rotary Club and Cub Scouts PAC 15. 44, please. As well as YASPA and the Aurora Youth Commission to discuss possible collaborative intergenerational activities. 45. In the area of transportation, we continued to attend Transportation Solutions Arapahoe County or TSAC meetings and welcomed the opportunity to play an instrumental role in the formation of the city's microtransit pilot program. 46. And we began working closely with the PROS Planning, Design and Construction Department on details to create the scope of work required for this pilot program. 47. One of our major transportation goals is to continue active engagement with this project by participating in proposal reviews, consultant interviews, and the consultant selection process. We also plan to invite a representative to speak to commissioners about connecting Aurora the citywide multimodal transportation master plan, which two of the commissioners attended last month. Your turn, Carolyn. Caroline, sorry. Okay, sorry, I just lost my presentation on my computer, but I've got it on paper. So I think we're starting with slide 48, correct? Yes. Okay, so um, on the legislative front, we renewed membership with the Colorado Center on Aging to retain access to online legislative resources. Slide 49, we updated the bulletin board at the ACAA and kept informed, slide 50, about numerous legislative bills relevant to older adults. 51, as far as the goals for the, in the area of legislation for 2024, please refer to page 10 of our report. 52, moving on to the Fraud, Abuse, and Prevention Committee. So this committee created and distributed, slide 53, an information rack card providing the top 10 scams and fraud prevention tips. 54, a couple of our goals include collaborating with regional and statewide organizations addressing issues of fraud and to attend the 2024 Senior Law and Safety Summit. 55, so in the area of housing, we established this housing committee late last year to learn more about issues of concern as it relates to housing for older, older adults and to educate them on a variety of these topics. 56, to meet our current goals, we've already invited the city's Housing and Community Services Department to speak at an upcoming meeting. And we'd love for you to all come join us if you can. 57, speaking of speakers, commissioners learned a lot from our speakers that we had in our meetings throughout last year, as you can see from the list. And we plan 58 to continue these speakers in 2024. And we've already heard from great speakers and we've learned a lot. I'm gonna let Jeannie finish this up now. Slide 59, our comments related to anticipated impact for the city of Aurora, and slide 60, 
and our relationship to the city's mission, goals, and purpose appear on page 13 in the report. 61, please. What are our needs from City Council? 62. Four of the most important requests we have this year are for council members to participate in a series of panel discussions to share your vision for the older adults in your respective wards. To support and participate in our signature events, that is the annual walk and roll, which was held on May 17th, and the upcoming Aurora Forum for Older Adults in October. And finally, we hope you'll support legislative requests presented by the commission relevant to older adults and 64. Continue to invite us to your ward meetings, providing space for information dissemination and engagement with your constituents. Caroline and I want to thank you for your attention today and for allowing us to summarize key points in our 2023 annual report. Now, what questions and or comments do you have for us? Councilmember Medina. Yes, uh, thank you, Janine and Council for your commission for everything you do with uh, active adults in the city of Aurora. Yeah, I was at the function, uh, was it Saturday? I'm, I'm trying to uh, lose track of the days. Uh, everybody that did the walk there and uh, was glad that everybody showed up. They had a pretty good crowd there. I think there was at least 60 people that came out and uh, did the walk there. So that was great to see everyone there. Y yeah, I'd like to maybe uh, extend an opportunity. Let me know some dates and times in the next couple months to uh, kind of get together with you. Lori as well is welcome to be there and uh, just look at uh, what kind of things you're looking at? I mean, I'm looking at potential things, uh, maybe looking at we had spoken earlier there uh, to look at maybe a potential another site uh, for a center and, and let's look at what that starts to look like and see what I can do to help to push some of that and look at resources to be able to make that happen. So I'd like to have the conversation sooner than later. So. Well, thank you, Ruben, and we will certainly get back with you on that. Thank you. Thank you again. Appreciate everything you do. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Councilmember Medina, and thank you to our presenters. I always enjoy getting updates from our very active uh, commissions. Um, it's exciting to see, you know, the reach that y'all have and all the different creative ideas. I love the intergenerational um, event. Um, the the banana split one was, uh, <laughs> um, I thought, pretty creative. So. Um, uh, happy to see that. Um, let's see. I don't have any questions, but um, always welcome. Y'all are always welcome to um, request some time on the calendar for uh, you know presenting at the at my town halls. I actually have one. Um, my last one for before the summer break this Thursday, so tomorrow. Um, at Moorhead, um, you're welcome to come and share any updates um, if you'd like or if you um, want to do like a more robust presentation we can think about um, scheduling something for um, August when we have uh, a little more time to to prepare but um, just wanted to name that y'all are welcome um, as well and um, let's see am I forgetting anything uh, apologies um, yeah happy to circle back on any um, other event requests as well um, but other than that, I don't have any questions and uh, thank you so much for your presentation and your time. You're very welcome. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right. Did we make it through our full agenda? I think so. All right. Um, well, I think that rounds us out for any, um, uh, formal presentations. Do we have any uh, miscellaneous items for consideration? None from staff today. All right. Seeing anything on my end. Wonderful. Um, let's talk about our next meeting on June 26th. Um, 
what does our agenda look like for the next meeting? Ines, do you have that handy? I do. Let me just pull it up really quickly. I know for sure it's the marketing update and a couple other items. Okay, just wanted to make sure that we um, it's a had enough for, to call a meeting. July, okay. Because July we're skipping that one. Correct. So it looks right. like in June we have the um, 2024 marketing update, the Cultural Affairs Commission annual report, and then DAVA is going to give their um, annual report. Okay. Um, all right. That sounds all good. All right. Um, I am still um, able to make that June 26th meeting. Councilman Medina, does that still work for you? Yep. Still good. All right. Then we will keep the date and time and we'll look forward to seeing you all here next month. And our meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Bye. Bye.